Hey guys, everybody out there in Because Jitsu Land, as promised, I'm coming live and we are bringing on uh, one of my favorite comedians that is running in the jiu-jitsu scene right now, um, Jamie Kilstein. You've probably known him through all sorts of political podcasts, uh, Joe Rogan Experience, and perhaps you've even seen his stand-up. So I'm super happy to get Jamie up in here and we are going to try to technology this thing. Buffering, buffering. How's everybody doing today? Right on. I'm seeing waves. Hi. There he is. Get it. Go on, my friend. How's it going? Good. I just chopped my screen in half, making sure you can see my beautiful chin. Ah, good. Uh, that was definitely accurate, by the way. When you were like, you've seen him on Joe Rogan, and you maybe seen his stand up. It's like, yeah, that, <laughs> that sounds right. You're actively trying to change that right now. I see you doing a whole lot more dates. Um, you're really focusing on the comedy thing now. Is that right? I went the the last time I went on Rogan's was like uh, it, it was some November, and it ended by him. It was so cool where he was like, uh, I just saw one of your people go, "What kind of meme is this?" Um, he uh, <laughs> he was like, "Welcome back to comedy," and I was like, "I'm gonna do stand up." And then I was just fucking. I told my here's what I told myself is the year I wasn't doing comedy and we can blend, we can talk jujitsu for the first time in my life. I, I only focused on jujitsu and I was coaching um, for the first time in my life at uh, Henzo Gracie, Los Angeles. And, uh, and it was, it was the first time I felt like I was actually helping people. You know what I mean? Because yeah. My old political stand up, I was just screaming at people online. It was like very self righteous. Uh, I was just yelling at people on Twitter, thinking I was helping people. When in reality, I was just yelling at this into this fucking echo chamber. Um, when I started teaching jujitsu, I'm like, oh, this is the first time I'm actually helping people. I'm like teaching kids, I'm helping whatever. And mm -hmm. so when I went on Rogan's uh, and I was like, I'm going to go back into stand up, I told myself, that because I was only around jujitsu people, because I was not doing comedy, I was like, this is the first time in my life I'm healthy. This is the first time in my life I'm not drinking. This is the first time in my life I'm doing good. I'm in shape. And then like the second I went to the comedy store, I was just like, I'm depressed and sad again. And I was like fucking drinking because I, I, I had this, uh, this thing in my head where I was like, if you do comedy, you have to be fucking depressed. You're not doing jujitsu. You're drinking. You're doing drugs, whatever. <laughs> and the reality of it is I was just fucking scared. Um, and I was using that as an excuse um, to, to not do it. And it's like, yeah, you can do, you can do both. That's what Joe does. Yeah, I always um, – I mean I'm, I'm very amateur when it comes to actual live action comedy that's not in like a small still format with a tiny caption over top. Um, I'm, so, but, I'm so bad at that. I'm terrible at tweeting <laughs> jokes. I could never do memes. I like wish I could. Um, so I love what you do. But anyway, sorry. Oh, well, appreciate it. Um, what I was getting at was the, the comedians that I see and watch and enjoy, they always seem to have either a dark or a shattered side to them, which, uh, you know, you always see that um, that old image of the laughing face beside the crying face. It's never just one or the other. They're both together, hey? Okay? Hey, I mean, you know... Uh, Robin was one of my best friends, uh, Brody Stevens. I knew from Los Angeles. Like, I mean, it's hard, man. There are countless alcoholics. And, and I think part of it is, you know, like with, with Rob Williams is a good example is when he died, I was like, you know, selfishly was like, uh, he was the one that used to call me about my depression, you know? And I would, mm -hmm. I, I would ask, uh, him, how he's doing, and he would kind of, you know, brush it off or whatever. Um, and that was because a lot of times depressed people are really good at helping others, right? Um, they're good at helping others because we don't help ourselves. The amount of times I've given out amazing advice uh, that I will not take um, myself <laughs> is fucking fascinating. Uh, there should be a study done on it. And I think that comics can do that. I think that a lot of times, you know, if you can make hundreds of strangers laugh a night, it, it, it makes you feel good about yourself to where you don't have to, um, you don't have to look inward. Uh, and one of the things that I really want to attempt to do now is, can I use those years where I was just doing jujitsu to 
you know, take what I learned from jujitsu about self-awareness, about self-exploration and not be a bitch, you know, go to comedy and be like, can I approach it? Can I access the dark shit in my head without uh, crumbling and, and letting it take over? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, I think I follow that. You know, I am curious um, to get the, the crossover correlation from your point of view. So, um, I mean, everybody always throws out these little uh, trope sayings about how jiu-jitsu saved my life and how jiu-jitsu blah, 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 you know, makes you a better person, fill in the blank, you know, letter X, whatever it's doing good for you. But for myself, having never had depression, thankfully, hopefully never have to, might, but uh, for, you know, people who out, out there who are or have or did, um, does jiu-jitsu for you in your experience mitigate that at all, temporarily, not at all? Yeah. I mean, here's how, here's how rare what you just said when you said, uh, or at least like my crew, when I just hang out with like comics and stuff, when you said, I don't have depression, my first response was, are you okay? Like, are you going to end up <laughs> fucking murdering someone? Um, yeah, man, it, it helps so much. And I know it's cliche. There are a couple reasons why it helps. The first one is when you have depression, when you have anxiety, when you, you know, people say how like meditation or yoga is, is really good for that. And I tried to meditate when I lived in New York. And I remember I would leave meditation or I would leave yoga with more problems. With I, 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 I left meditation mm -hmm. with more to worry about than I did before I went in. And the reason was I had to sit alone with my thoughts for an hour. And I'm like, this is, a, this is my nightmare. This is my fucking nightmare. Um, Jiu-jitsu forces you to have the same effects that you would get from yoga and meditation because it focuses you to be present because you have men trying to choke you to death. So I had trouble meditating because I couldn't be present. I couldn't not think about, you know, uh, who's mad at me, what I have to do, all this stuff. But jujitsu, by way of violence, forces you to be present and in the moment. So that's one thing you're getting, right? You're getting the effects that a normal human being would get from meditation or from uh, yoga. The other thing is accomplishment. Um, you leave feeling like a badass, even when you're new. I mean, dude, I didn't get my blue belt from Marcelo Garcia until I think I was like maybe a year in. But when I got my blue belt from Marcelo, I, I didn't tap anybody at white belt. There wasn't even like some little wiener new kid that I tapped. I did not s start submitting people until I got my blue belt. That sucks. That's really hard. Um, that is a horrible year of paying money to get the shit kicked out of you with no validation. But where the validation was coming from was getting a little better every day or um, uh, just like maybe uh, the guy who gets me in six arm bars gets me in five arm bars or just the fact that I survived or just the fact that I did all the rounds. I mean, I'm 37 now, I'm a brown belt. And I was depressed all week. And Emma was like, my girlfriend was like, you got to fucking train. Just go tonight. And I was like, I'm really tired. And I went, second I showed up, I'm like a different person today. Um, there is something about the community. There is something about pushing yourself. There is something about being present. There's something about acquiring knowledge, about learning. I mean, I truly think the meaning of life is every day you try to grow and you try to uh, uh, acquire new skills and become a better person and, and whatever. And like nothing does that quicker than jujitsu. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Um, not only does it do it quickly, but you, like you're saying, yeah, you, you either do or you get choked. So you have to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you touched on something pretty cool there about the, the white belt, never having tapped somebody. First of all, Either that means that you really significantly suck, or, or uh, probably more towards the other column is you're training at Marcelo Garcia's and everybody significantly rocks. So, <laughs> uh, so like I, I don't, I don't think I've, I don't, I don't think I've said this publicly, um, and I hope that uh, some of my old Marcelo people find this, uh, find the archived uh, live chat or whatever. Um, I, I, before I went to Marcelo's. I was, there was a straight blast gym 
that I trained at in Jersey. It's not around anymore. Um, and I trained there when I was like in my early 20s. And I went to Marcello's when I was 28. So there was like a long period in between um, years and years of me just on the road and drinking and doing drugs and getting fat. And, uh, but when I was training at straight blast, I thought that we were just no gi. We didn't have, uh, we didn't have belts. I think the instructor was technically a blue belt. Um, but I was like one of the dudes kind of like running that shit. You know, I was like, I get really obsessed with things. So I was the guy showing up twice a day. I ended up helping like, you know, assistant teaching or whatever. And so when I showed up at Marcello's, even though it had been like six years since I trained, I thought I was a blue belt, like legitimately. And I had this moment where I walked in and I didn't know who Marcelo Garcia was. I had no fucking idea. Um, and I walk in and in my head, I go, you know what? I'm a blue belt. Like I'm a no gi blue belt, but I'm going to be humble and I'm going to like restart as a white belt. And then I'll probably get like my blue belt like a month or two. And then, and then everyone will slow clap me because I was so humble and so gracious. And I'll tell everyone that secretly I was a blue belt, but I wanted to, long story short, then I just start getting the absolute shit kicked out of me for fucking an entire year. And I'm like, I'm a white belt. I'm a fucking white belt. I was never a blue belt. I'm totally wrong. Um, but you can approach that in two ways, right? And you see this uh, for people who come into your school you can either go, and, and, and this is another good thing about jujitsu. This is what makes jujitsu people, in my opinion, so strong, is you can walk. I could have left that day, and I could have been like, well, this is bullshit. If this was in the fucking street, if, like, I could use strikes or if I could whatever, you know, I'd be able to kick those guys' asses. Or you do the thing that most pro fighters do where you go, wow, he's gotten a crap kicked out of me. Like, I want to learn that. And I think that's almost like your first – test you know mm -hmm. so where are you training nowadays because you're no longer in new york you're not training at marcello as you said you've done some stuff with henzo academy but i think you're in arizona right now right? yeah i'm in arizona right now uh i'm not one of those like gym hopper uh gross people i've just like moved uh, a lot of times and uh i'm with uh, anthony burchek at 10th planet tucson um is by far far um the greatest experience in my life not just jujitsu um i have never been welcomed anywhere and treated like family so fast um as i have at this place uh and it, it, it's weird that i never trained at 10th planet before because of my relationship with joe and like tate fletcher is a really good friend of mine um and, but but really just like the punk rock ethos of 10th planet you know like it's something mm -hmm. that uh i should have been all over from the get-go i mean there was no 10th planet in new york um you know uh, there's a lot of crossover with you know i know eddie loves marcello um and he came by the gym like i was there that day like he came by the gym mm -hmm. um but just that idea of i feel like you know with my comedy i was always Bill Hicks, Richard Pryor, George Carlin, those are my heroes. Uh, with music, like I used to open for like Bad Religion and uh, my, my dad confiscated my NWA cassette tape uh, and then re-gifted it to me three years later when he thought I could handle it, which is hilarious. <laughs> um, and it was that, uh, he, he took my NWA cassette and Kickboxer because of the titty, well, the bar scene, um, the VHS, <laughs> and he hid both of those. And then when I was like, he really saved you on that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. That scene where he gets like drunk as a test and like fights. Me. Yeah. It saved your life. Right. Totally deferred. Oh you. my God. And, uh, and so, um, planet is that it is the punk rock. It's people are telling me I can't do this. So fuck them. I'm going to go do it. I'm going to create this new thing and I am going to get shit on for years and years. And, and now they're fucking figuring it out. And EBI is so huge. And he's trying to make jujitsu mainstream. And, you know, it's so awesome. And, and Burchek, uh, he represents that. Um, I think that I always probably avoided 10th Planet because my guard sucks because I have, like, old man flexibility. But what's so great about uh, Anthony is he's a fucking wrestler. So, and, and yeah. he's an MMA fighter. So Burchek is, like, combining uh, 
uh, aggressive fucking wrestling with this like 10th planet tricky guard system. And I've never seen anything like it. Um, it is so fucking cool. And everybody there, I mean, I got a text message from one of the instructors where he was like, Hey, you're playing in Phoenix, which is like two hours away. And he was like, we're going to all drive down to see you. And I was like, is it, is this what friendship is like? Like I was literally so taken back that people would drive to, to see me. Cause like, I, you know, I mean, there are a bunch of people at Marcelo's like Satava and Munchie, um, that I was really tight with, um, Gianni. Um, but, uh, but this level of camaraderie, I mean, I've never fucking had it before. Um, so yeah, I guess I'm a 10th planet guy, even though I fucking mm-hmm. can't play rubber guard yet. So what I got out of that is everybody go watch Jamie's shows because he's got no friends. But it's, that's my marketing. Uh, that's my marketing strategy. I'm sad and I'm lonely. Come see me so I don't kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> so um, against, ooh, what are you drinking out of right there? Hey, Henzo Gracie. Uh, that's another oh, thing I fucking love about. Man. Can I just say this about jujitsu? And this is something that Marcelo and Burchak, um, both, man, uh, Marcelo would have a people visiting from Japan, people who drove five hours, people, whatever. And every day he got there and he would show up and he would shake everybody's hand and he would ask where they were from and he would roll with everybody. He, would, he was the first guy to start putting up like all of his techniques on like that style of website. Um, and it's because he's the best in the fucking world, right? Burchak, yeah. I feel the same way about the the people I have met who are the fucking best at comedy, at jujitsu. I mean, you know, Chappelle introduced himself to my dad like 10 years ago. These people are also the most humble and the most welcoming and the sweetest. You know, so many of my fans are like nervous. They're like, I hear you talk about jujitsu on your podcast and I want to try it, but they, they think it's just going to be a bunch of like mean MMA people who are, you know, and by the way, MMA people are fucking great too. Uh, but I think it's gonna be a bunch of like mean, like bullies. And it's like, yo, it is the exact opposite, especially if you find a good place and a good school. It's like the best people in the world are the most humble, ironically enough. Yeah, that's like probably the most common thing you hear when somebody talks about this black belt that they trained with. It's like, oh, and he's just the nicest guy in the world. Yeah, of course, man. I mean, I used to, you know, you go drinking with a bunch of jujitsu jujitsu guys, they're the least likely to get into a fight because they get to test themselves every day. The dude who's like, you looking at my girl or posturing, it's like, you don't know how to make a girl come and you're projecting. <laughs> that is what is happening right now. Yeah, I, I remember some quote from uh, some samurai there is that like really, I'm, I'm really drawing from the bank on that one. Um, <laughs> there was some old Japanese saying that, that said that people who train, I forget how the wording goes, but people who train are the least likely to fight because they're just so tired from training. Good. Yeah, 100 percent. I don't want to fight at a fucking bar. I'm like, I'm limping. You know, whenever me and my brother would train together, we would like and would go like we go to the bar afterwards. We would limp like we were like 98 year old like octane uh, you know, like we were just like disasters i was like i don't even know if i'd be able to fight um but it's true and then there's a, oh there's also that great uh, 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 uh i will also say some other japanese guy there's that other great saying where it's like i'd rather be uh what is it i'd rather be a warrior in a gardener in a garden than a gardener in a war or something like that and right. and it's true like it's there's a confidence knowing that like you test yourself every day, but it's a quiet confidence, you know, like it, it, it's not, yeah. I mean, I guess unless you go on like Facebook, then it's very loud and everyone's, uh, right. everyone's yelling at each other. Yeah. <laughs> Against my better judgment, um, I want to touch on a little bit of your politics, which is a large part of what your podcast is, is on, which I am thoroughly enjoying right now, I must add. Um, Man, when I found out you like listened and you weren't just being like nice on Instagram, I got so excited because <laughs> legitimately, like, you have my favorite fucking jujitsu page. No, I appreciate it, but um, like, not only guys, not only is this podcast fun, uh, entertaining, it is constant. He's doing multiple shows per week. Um, he's got extra stuff for Patreons, which I joined up just so I can get extra stuff from. It's pretty cool. Um, but your politics, like. 
they, they got you in trouble a little while ago, which caused a whole bunch of shenanigans. Uh-huh. But nowadays, nowadays, you, you, I find more than anybody, for someone who still holds like a, a left-wing perspective, you try to be more accommodating and understanding and trying to understand people instead of politics, which I, I, is so refreshing. Because, dude, like, first of all, first of all, I'm a Canadian, so... American politics don't really affect me in the same way. I kind of just watch with some popcorn back here, like, hmm, these guys are crazy. This is fun. Um, the way but, Jordan Peterson up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, me and Jordan Peterson. That's all that's up there. <laughs> um, <laughs> but besides the fact that it doesn't affect me personally, I don't like to even dip my toe into those sort of conversations. Like, I'll sort of, like, peer in on a comment section on Facebook and be like, I'm out. I can't do yeah. it. That was, that was rough. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that, that's what I should have made uh... – uh, that should have been my my meme idea for the naked chick running away and getting tased is trying to run away from <laughs> political Facebook debates. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, there's part of me. I was actually I, I just did an interview with uh, this journalist who was like one of the main journalists around the the Chelsea Manning case, and we talked about this because he started doing improv and he loves blues music. And I was like, dude, if you could stop talking about politics and you could just run away and do improv and you know, play blues, would you do it? Or I think about that with me and jujitsu. I mean, so many times I open the news and it's like, you know, liberals complaining about the video music awards and Trump doing something crazy. And I'm like, I could open a fucking jujitsu gym. Like I'm a really good teacher. Like I could just do that and live like a quiet life. And I, and I think about that um, a lot, but what my podcast is now is it's pretty much, it's a, it's a political show for people who hate politics, right? And the, the, the times I have the most fun, it's not even political. I think that, I think that we agree on more than we think we do. Um, now that I actually mm. talk to conservatives, I mean, fuck, I just went on Glenn Beck's show. My girlfriend's parents are conservative. Now that I'm having conversations with conservatives I really like, I'm finding out that, like, we want the same thing. No one wants mass shootings. No one wants uh, bigotry. No one wants, I mean, look, you have fucking racists and you have shitheads everywhere, but that's not all conservatives. And the biggest thing that people forget is when we are divided, the powerful people who profit on us suffering, whether that's shipping us off to wars, um, by the way, that's like a lot of conservatives um, that aren't going to keep us safer, um, uh, charging us crazy amounts for life-saving medicine. Um, you know, they win when we're screaming and yelling at each other about old Kevin Hart tweets. Um, <laughs> poor Republicans, poor liberals, like we're being screwed over by the same people. Um, and Russians. The Russians. The Russians. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're being screwed over by the same people. And not only that, but we're missing out on half the population when you assume that you can't talk to someone who has different political views than you. It is, yeah. it was so sad the first time I like went on a conservative show and we were backstage and the guy started like talking about Norm MacDonald. And I literally thought as a 37 year old, I think, intelligent man. I was like, you like comedy? And I was like, what did I think conservatives were? Like, they were just all, like, burning crosses. It's like, they have different ideas. And when you can realize, I mean, this sounds like I realized that on a fucking, like, mushroom trip. But when you can realize that, like, we all want the best for our families and for our countries. And we all want to pet the stranger's dog. And we all, you know, have things in common. Now you can have conversations with people who disagree. Um, And by the way, hanging out at jujitsu gyms, that was the first time I was around diverse people. When I was around just a bunch of, you know, whiny liberals who would complain on Twitter all day, uh, it was all fucking white people. Uh, Literally, all white people. Um, When I started going to jujitsu, it was the first time I was hanging around diverse people, uh, diverse political opinions. I would become friends with, people who didn't share my political views. And it's like, okay, if I can do that on a mat where we're literally beating the shit out of each other, I should be able to take that um, and bring it into podcasting or Twitter. Uh, but it's hard, man. It's, I know I would get way more popular faster 
if I was back on Twitter and I was shouting at liberals or shouting at conservatives. Um, but I'm attempting to take the high road and we're building like a really cool audience over there because of it. Yeah, I hope that continues to, to go in that trend because like I said, it's part of why I enjoy it so much. It's, it's still, it can still be entertaining. It can still bring the news into it without making it like these people are awesome and these people are the devil. And, and it's just, and it's fucking easy. Like when I used to do it on the left, it's because I was doing it in an echo chamber and it would just, people would just pat me on the back for it. And again, right. Like spending a year at jujitsu, you realize like it was the equivalent of if I only rolled with blue belts, right. Where it's mm. like, you want to be the guy in there, you know, pointing to all the black belts and brown belts. That's who I want to roll with. Um, no offense to the blue belts. Um, but I mean, I, 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 I want to make sure that I'm, being challenged as much as humanly possible. That's how I get better. And when we just retreat into our social media bubble and we're just surrounded by people who agree with us or who if you just like call someone a fucking Nazi because uh, you disagree with them, you get like a hundred likes or retweets. It's like, how are we growing? What are we doing for society, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, we have a blue belt <clears throat> who's saying no offense taken. I'm so sorry. Again, if you miss this, this is, if you miss this is something I constantly, I constantly have to remind myself of while I'm making memes because, like, at least eighty percent of everybody who does jujitsu is a white belt, and maybe like ten of the remaining twenty are a blue belt, and I shit on them constantly. But I will say this, uh, Johnny, who said that blue belts will make a joke about it because blue belts still have the humility where they're so excited to just not be a white belt and they know they have a long way to go. If I said that about purple belts, rage. Because purple belts are <laughs> like the, like, I should be a fucking brown belt. And like, it's like the weird, yeah. like I was like super chill until I became a purple belt. And then I was like a little bit of a monster. And then I had to like, that got weeded out of me. Um, but yeah, blue belt, I was still just like, just fucking happy to be there. <laughs> Yeah, I've heard some people say a blue belt is one of the hardest belts because um, as a white belt, nobody really expects a whole lot of you. You basically just come in there to survive and get your shit kicked. But um, as a blue belt, you have a little bit higher standard that people are expecting, but you can still be touched by white belts, whereas purple belts don't have to worry about that anymore. So now blue belt is actually being crushed from both directions. And, and, and there's that like fear of like, if a white belt gets something off on me, like, are they gonna take my blue belt away? Because like, you worked so hard to just not be a grown up wearing a white belt. Like, you feel like you're like a kid in karate class. It is like, when I see like, especially like big dudes, like have to put on their white belt, I'm like, God fucking bless you. Uh, but yeah, white belt, I mean, I remember the first time a black belt tapped me, I just started laughing mid submission. Because I was just like, this is so cool. <laughs> and then I would tap because you're just like, you're not even fucking aware. Um, but then, yeah, you get that like three strike blue belt rage or because purple belt also feels like blue belt. You're happy not to be a white belt. Purple belt feels purple belt is so legit. Um, and it feels so far away where I think I still was probably the most emotional when I got my purple belt. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, so let me look for that three sessions for a week. Um, that could be a you question. Um, but uh, yeah. Uh, actually, purple belt. Yeah. Uh, no, you felt like yeah. Can I actually answer that person's question? Yeah, sure. Go for it. So they, Why don't you read it out? So they said how they've been training for a couple months, but I find it hard to progress due to the only local club having three sessions per week. Any tips? Uh, here's my tip. I'm a psycho, so I'm always the person who. Like when I was in high school, I, Jeet Kune Do was the first thing I, I started, right? So I was like, it's Bruce Lee. And uh, I was like 17. I showed up with five people. We were all going to do it. And then I was, with, by week two, I was the only one left. And then by week four, I was mopping so I could uh, afford doing unlimited. Because I go nuts. Like I started a band when I was in high school. And uh, we started to take off a little bit. And I was like, all right, guys, we got to start talking about like merch and touring. And they were all like, I have to go to college. Um, I think that's why jujitsu appealed to me and comedy appealed to me, where I'm like, I can be the psycho who controls how far I take this. So yeah. when I lived in New York, when I was training at Marcello's, um, I was also doing Muay Thai at the Y um, with Phil Nurse. 
And the way I was in like the morning class, because I would do jujitsu in the afternoon. And most of the night classes, all the sparring sessions were at night. Um, but I had shows, so I couldn't spar. And I was like, well, this is bullshit. I'm not going to get good unless I can't spar. So I gathered a bunch of people and I go, hey, why don't we start a sparring group like Tuesday and Thursday or whenever they don't have classes? And then we went to the front desk and we said, uh, hey, can we do like a fucking fight club thing? Um, and can we just spar on these days? And they said, yeah. Um, so I would suggest that. I would be like, if you are super dedicated and if you feel like you're not getting enough, um, find even if it's just one other guy and then ask your coach be like hey is there a time we'll clean up the mats is there a time we can come in or just buy mats i mean i also had mats yeah. in my apartment in new york city like a psycho and like gianni would come over fucking uh uh sarah mcmahon came over one night and we trained together mm -hmm. um and it was just in this little tiny room that was like you know, big enough to be like, maybe like a baby's bedroom and it was only mats. Um, so you can make it happen. You know, uh, I'm sure you could also say you could, uh, uh, watch YouTube clips, study, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but you really just got to do it. So if you can find even one guy just to spar with, uh, you're good. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great suggestion. I've had mats at home since I was like a blue belt. Um, and a lot of people I know will do that as well. And they'll just get a hold of, you know, your favorite training partner and just get them on an off day. You got an evening free, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, whatever. You can find time to get a couple hours of rolling. For sure. So fun. Like you feel like, like when you do that, that, there's something really special. Like after classes are cool, but there's something really special when like you and three of your psycho friends got together like on a Sunday when everyone's at church and like you beat the shit out of each other for two hours. No one really knows about it. You know, like it, it just, it feels really cool. Mm -hmm. Plus, I mean, there's your extra XP. You got some extra reps out of it. Maybe you're drilling, maybe you're sparring, maybe you're watching DVDs and trying stuff out, but it does give you that uh, little extra bonus. So, it, and then you can bring that back to the gym and kick other people's asses who weren't there and then feel superior, which is really the whole point of jujitsu. To go to fucking church, you chicken shit. Um, <laughs> thanks. Uh, oh, cool. So they're going to try that. They said, damn, that's rad. Cool. I'll definitely talk to some of my rolling partners. And then I'll subscribe to Jamie Kilston's podcast. And I'll follow him on Instagram because his Instagram following is small, but his Twitter's big. But he has to be political on Twitter and it makes him want to die. Hooray. That was really insightful of him to write all that. Uh, I know. We really like, really like tapped into what I was thinking. <laughs> so speaking of which, you are fairly new to Instagram. Yeah, um, building a following there, but posting daily, you know, comedy stuff, jujitsu stuff, Talib the Kitty stuff. There's there's something for everybody right now. Yep. Yeah, I uh it's funny because I feel like most of my friends are jujitsu people and like I know I should be promoting my brand. Like now that I'm doing more clubs, I'm gonna start posting more stand up clips, which is cool. Um and I've been posting clips from the uh the podcast uh as well, uh, to kind of give people like the flavor of it. But man, I'm just like sitting on so many pictures of like me and Hodger Gracie, me and Marcelo. And I'm like, there are like 20 people on here that are going to get it. Um, I just want to get famous enough with stand up that I can only post and talk about jujitsu. <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting dilemma to get in. <laughs> so you and I were kind of chatting in DMs a little while ago about uh trying to add the two together, trying to maybe find some dates to to run a seminar somewhere and then go do comedy in the evening. And I think that that sounds like, first of all, just like a hell of a lot of fun, but also something that I think would be a really fun crossover so that you can like do a, a seminar in the afternoon and then go do some stand up, and the people who are at the seminar can come and see you bomb in real life. Yeah, yeah but I also feel like, um, I think that, so when I started coaching at Henzo's, I had never taught before. Um, but I think what made me, but then my, pat, my classes started getting packed. And I realized that what made me a decent teacher is one, the fact that I've gotten the shit kicked out of me on the mat and on stage, but two, just being like a performer. Um, like if I ever did seminars, there's definitely like, there are things that I'm like a specialist at, um, like because of Marcella, like my guillotine and like, like I think there's, and I've also like, I've gotten to train 
Like I've gotten to do privates with like Hodger and Henry Akins and Huron and fucking, you know, coming up under Marcelo. Like I've seen so many different styles. Um, I think the thing that made me the best at jujitsu and the best teacher is the fact that I got the shit kicked out of me because I was never big. I was never athletic. Um, but there is something really cool about uh, comics or just like Burchek's so funny. And, you know, Marcelo is not really known for being jokey, um, you know, but Burchek, like he speaks my language. And I think there are some people who are intimidated um, by jujitsu, but if they see someone being funny or self-deprecating or, or whatever as a coach, it makes you, at least for me, it makes me feel really at ease. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that would be a really cool seminar too. Um, just like, uh, uh, you know, whatever. But I also think that like jujitsu, there's a reason Rogan's so popular. Um, oh my God, on my wall. There probably is one on my wall. Um, there's a, there's a reason Rogan's so popular. I think that, hold on, let me see if there's a spider or maybe it's your wall. <laughs> Now I'm, now I'm creeped out. I don't know. I don't, know. I don't have any dangerous spiders up here. They all got to hide in the way. Okay, yeah, I'm in Arizona. It's probably definitely me. Um, and so, but the reason Rogan's so popular, I think a lot of the same people who like really edgy, boundary pushing comedy um, are also attracted to jujitsu. Um, I don't know if it's because we're whatever the opposite of risk averse is. Um, you know, we like being. It's being hit in the head, it makes you risk averse. So it kind of like both. Both careers tend to have a lot of those people have been hit a lot. But it is, it's the CT. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that could be fucking great. And what I would love to do is, you know, there's definitely stuff that I could, uh, you know, uh, teach jujitsu people. But what I would really love to do, and I think where me and you would be good, especially being comedy people too, is I would love all of those fucking nerds and scrawny misfits who are afraid to do jujitsu. I would love this to be kind of their first like entry just to be like, Hey, it's a safe space. We're both like insecure wieners. I am. Um, but also like we can teach you how to fuck people up. Yeah. <laughs> so something about that, I was always wondering, um, cause I've done a little bit of stand up myself and I know that the crowds can be, well, they usually are pretty belligerent and drunk, but you know, they're, they're a bunch of drunk, tough guys who got nothing better to do on a Tuesday evening. Um, and they're fucking, they're mad that like their girlfriend's laughing at you and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. So there's a lot of uh, interesting dynamics going on in that way. Do you ever, or do you try to specifically avoid bringing up that you know how to fight? What's cool is you, like my cauliflower ear is like hipster cauliflower ear where like, um, it's not like, <laughs> let's see it. Show it up here. We'll compare. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mine's like, they're, oh yeah. They're like little you got, weird bumps. You got the nubbin going. Yeah. So mine goes out which is great. Um, like my brothers are like Randy Couture, like inside out, but, nice. but mine, uh, like he's gotten out of bar fights, but mine usually are like people in the know are like, mm, all right. Um, I think that, uh, and not to make your funny question too serious, but I think the thing about self-defense that people don't understand, I remember when I, uh, I had in trouble once, uh, let's phrase it differently. Um, I think that day one in jujitsu, day one in kickboxing, you should be able to spar. Um, I think you can do it lightly. I think you can do isolated sparring. Try to get out of this guy's guard, right? No submissions. But I think you have to do something in an alive manner. And there are lots of schools that'll say, well, if you have sparring and kickboxing, you know, women aren't going to want to do it. And it's like, ooh, uh, which is a very antiquated thing to say. Um, but I think that with sparring, even if you are getting your ass kicked, learning how to take a punch, learning how not to turn your back, learning how not to freak the fuck out and quit and leave the gym is the first and one of the most important steps of self-defense. You will carry yourself differently. Um, ever since I started doing jujitsu full time, no one's tried to fight me and I'm not imposing looking. Um, mm. I think that subconsciously people who know how to fight will carry themselves differently. Doesn't mean it's a force field. Doesn't mean you're invincible, but the confidence and the calmness that you get by getting the shit kicked out of you 
um, is really, really uh, a factor. I think that, yeah, if I got up on stage and I was like, oh, I could fucking kick all your guys' asses. Okay, now that triggers something in them that what we were talking about earlier that I don't know how to make women come and I got to fight the little Jew. Um, that triggers that part of their brain, right? Um, and that's not good. But I think just holding your own and being able to stay relaxed in the middle of confrontation, that's kind of what turns people off, you know? It's, it's like when you mm-hmm. don't respond to trolls online, they get bored and they want to walk away. They want someone to freak out. That makes a lot of sense. I, um, before I got full time into doing jujitsu, um, I was a journeyman welder for 15 years. Whoa. So a lot of time around really aggro, uh, alpha, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, breathing testosterone types. Vikings. Um, oh yeah. Knuckle draggers to the extreme. Um, really good at one thing, which is welding and not good at anything else like social skills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there is, um, there's this one guy that I would, uh, that I would work with and he was like the prototypical jock. I'm sure his entire life before welding, he was the quarterback. He was the captain. He was that guy. He had a big bull chest that he probably never had to work for. (laughs) And, um, (laughs) and uh, he, you know, the word gets around after a little bit in a work area that so-and-so trains martial arts. And it's like, I'm not, again, I'm not an intimidating guy. I'm, I'm a string bean. I'm six, one, 165 pounds. So I'm a skinny nerd that, uh, this big guy is now under the understanding that he works with someone who some people think are more alpha than him. And so, yeah, he would, uh, I guess behind my back, he would always talk about, well, you know, if it ever came down to it, blah, blah, blah. And there's, there was one time when we were in a conversation between some, some mutual welders where that came up. It's like, well, he was saying, you know, it wouldn't be a problem if it ever came up. And I looked at him straight in the face. I say, anytime. And he, that was all I had to say. I just said, anytime. Yeah. I said, there's grass outside there. There's cement right here, if that's what you want. Yep. And, and he sort of just, <laughs> and then never heard about it again. That's my favorite. My brother, uh, when someone starts shit with him online, he, uh, he won't respond in like a dignified way. He'll only just write time and place and then it stops. <laughs> and like, it's, Send location. it's so funny. Send location. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing too, where it's like, we can give our gym addresses. Like you can literally sign a waiver uh, and fight me. Yeah. Like I wouldn't, yeah. uh, but you, you can. Um, but yeah, man. I, and that's why I love fucking jujitsu guys. If, if I go out with the guys at my gym, the, and someone tried to start a fight, we would be buying that guy beers by the end of the night and laughing with him. Now, is it because my team is constantly high? Perhaps. Um, but also, <laughs> like, I don't, I would do everything in my power to kind of laugh and be like, bro, you don't want to do this. Uh, and, 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 and be friends with that guy by the end of it. I mean, I remember that happened once um i was probably a blue belt which means like i, I was still probably would have got into like a fight uh but like I, I i had this joke about like the iraq war or something back in the day and i had this dude like storm the stage and was like you don't fucking talk about the troops you don't blah 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 and uh you know i, I like i ripped him apart in in there it was in austin and i hit, uh i saw him at the bar afterwards and i was like i'm going up to this guy and i was like hey man can i buy you a beer and we ended up talking and I got to explain to him that like, yo, I'm criticizing this war, not because I'm anti-troop, red pill, Jamie, I, it's bound to happen. Um, but, uh, but because I'm pro troops, which means I'm pro you not getting shot in the head, which means I'm right. pro, like, if you're going to be fucking brave enough to sign up for the military, I want to hold the people who are sending you over there fucking accountable. And dude, we hit it off so quickly but if i was like i gotta be the fucking alpha then like i would have started attacking him he would have started attacking me and who gives a shit but again the great thing about jujitsu is every day i beat the shit out of someone and every day i get caught which means that you're aware that you can get caught anytime you're aware i mean my first teacher that guy had straight blast he said something so great to me that i hated when he said this to me as an 18 year old where he said uh he said two things that probably stopped me from getting into multiple street fights. He said, the first pussy that starts a fight with you is going to be the first pussy that sues you when you beat the shit out of them. And I was just like, 
valid. I don't have a savings account. I should take that into consideration. <laughs> and then, uh, and then it also, like, we are aware of our bodies. We've been injured before. We've been injured, dude. I've gotten so many injuries when fucking fucking somebody up when winning. Where I'm like, if I double leg someone and that guy hits his fucking head on a curb, like. I'm not going to jail for manslaughter. Like, that's insane. I would so much rather intellectually take someone apart or just convince the guy that we should be friends. Like, I've done that so many times, man, where we end up just drunk hugging at the end. And, like, (laughs) that's more satisfying. And then I'll go get my ass kicked at the gym or kick someone's ass at the gym. Yeah. So, first of all, great advice. Second of all, worst fight story ever. It's so bad, right? <laughs> oh, mine? It's terrible. Oh, okay. I, I, yes, yeah. yeah. Where you just, you know, you got to know him, got a drink, everybody hugged. That was a terrible, terrible it's fight. I'd, I'd rate that like a 10-7 round for him. Yeah, I know. Uh, the, well, not only this, is one of the only other altercations I've been in. Um, I used to work security in New Jersey, and I had to chase some guy down. Didn't use any jujitsu. didn't fucking jump on his back. I did that thing. You remember when you were a kid and you'd kick someone's foot into their other foot and they fall? <laughs> that is what I did. That is the move I used. Nice. Nice. That's like the playground to Ashi Harai yeah. for all the judo yeah. fans out there. Yeah, exactly. I was like a step away from having like one of my friends behind him on his knees and shoving him over. It was, it was awful. I'm being um, put on blast here by BJJ Problems, He's trying to take over the chat. I know, I was trying, I, I didn't know who he was calling out, so I was going to be like, I'll fucking fight you. I'm like, <laughs> He's I'll, calling like, out the world, <laughs> man. <laughs> Do you read that language that just went up there? I feel like that's the biggest burn yet, and I can't read it. It probably is. Oh, what if it's like really deep and personal? I'm like, just no, probably knows, really are, knows are insecurities, too. It's, it's for the best. I'm like, my dad's not proud. Both. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he wants to fight both of us. Okay. We'll have to do that. Same time, motherfucker. Um, Beauty. Yeah, man. Well, I think uh, we're going to be running out of Instagram time here. They only let us run for about 60 minutes, and we're at the 50 mark here. So is there anything that you want to specifically uh, throw out there to the peoples of the world? Yeah, well, uh, this weekend in Phoenix, I will be – Fighting BJJ problems. Uh, no, I will. Uh, uh, this week in Phoenix, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, I'm with uh, my friend Jessica Kirsten at the House of Comedy. Um, but the most important thing is, like, I just, the reason I love Instagram so much, even though I am new to it, is Twitter seems to just be people yelling at each other about politics. And Instagram, I can literally open up and feel better about myself. I just follow, like, jujitsu people and athletes and like instagram is kind of my my happy place so i would love people to follow me here um if you if you want to like validate me i'm all verified and cool on twitter but also fuck twitter um i just want more cool jujitsu people in my life but the podcast man uh it is crazy ever since going on 10th uh starting to train at 10th planet like geo uh, martinez did my podcast there's so much fucking overlap between punk misfit jujitsu people and my podcast i'm finding out um that would be really cool if they could check it out uh, you can listen to it for free uh on itunes stitcher spotify or get all the links uh, at jamie um and that's it man sweet well i appreciate you coming on here uh taking some time out of your busy not doing anything and sitting on the couch day yep, yep, yep. Uh, i know those are very important i got a spider to kill. but uh, <laughs> you got a spider to kill yeah so uh Thanks for coming on, Jamie. You're welcome back anytime. I hope to uh, meet you and roll you in person one of these days. Fuck yeah, dude. Uh, until then. We'll definitely do it. Thank you so much. All right. See you, Take care, guys.